Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all keeping well. This Christmas I was very lucky and I got a set of filters that I was after and they are the Antlia LRGB 1.25mm uh, Pro Series Pro V filters. So let's get these into the filter wheel and see how they perform. My name's Glenn, you're watching Astro Bloke. After buying my uh, Antlia S2 3 nanometer filter, I was really impressed with the quality. And I saw that they did an LRGB uh, Pro series set of filters. And uh, I really fancied to try these out. So put them on my Christmas list and I was really lucky to get some. So I'm gonna put these into my uh, seven position, well actually it's an eight position filter wheel and they're 1.25 inch. So the filters uh, are really nice quality. They come in a really nice mount. They're quite deep, but uh, do sit inside of the ZWO filter wheel without um, fouling on the lid cover. Um, when I bought my Chroma ones, you have to make sure they're fully screwed in. If there's any gap at all, they can actually catch the cover and stop the uh, filter wheel rotating smoothly. So the um, filters, as I say, are of a really nice quality. Uh, they look really nice. Um, the mounts are good. Uh, I'll get them in, but obviously the proof in the pudding is to use them and see how they perform. So I'm planning to take a picture of um, a Galaxy with these, which is uh, Messier 106. I did photograph this before, but I'm really hoping with my new CT10 scope um, that I can get a better image than I got before, um, which I, it was about a year ago. I think March last year, I took a picture. In fact, I'll show you that picture. Um, I was I was pleased with it, but I don't think there's a lot of uh, detail in this, so I'm really hoping to capture a lot more detail. I took that image with an RC8 scope, um, so it'll be interesting to see how the CT10 compares to that. Right, so uh, let's get this onto the uh, scope and uh, get ourselves ready for a night of imaging. I was able to get a few nights of imaging on uh, M106 and I was really pleased with the results. The filters seemed to hold up really well. In total, I got just over eight hours of LRGB data. I was doing 90 second subs on the luminance and uh, five minute subs on the RGB and they were giving back some really nice detail. I'm gonna show you a couple of versions of the target 
So one was just with the Antlia filters, the LRGB, which came out really nicely. I also then uh, took four and a half hours of HA uh, data, because there's a nice HA spike that comes out through this uh, Galaxy, and added that in. That is the better picture, but I would expect that because it's uh, got the LRGB and the HA, so there's there's more there's more information there. But the HA really does add a nice bit of information to uh, that target, and I'm really really happy with the final results. I hope you like that image too. One point I want to make about the uh, Antlia filters is they are advertised as parfocal. Now, parfocal is considered that uh, you wouldn't have to refocus or it would be a minimal amount of refocusing. Um, I do find that all the filters have got a slightly different focal point. So in Nina, I use a plugin by Dark Customs, uh, which is a filter offset calculator. Basically runs through a number of iterations of autofocus on each filter and then saves each of those offsets. So I don't have a problem with that when I'm switching filters because my uh, electronic filter wheel, sorry, my electronic automatic focuser is uh, going to just go straight to the focal point for that filter. So it, it, there's no sort of time loss or anything. But importantly, what you can't do is just focus on say like the luminance and then you know that the RG and B are going to be okay. They are going to be slightly off from that focus. So are they true parfocal? Mm, not really. Um, and for your best results you are going to need to um, have filter offsets in place. Um, but it's not a difficult thing to have and uh, works really well. And from what I've read, um, I'm not sure there are any filters out there that are truly parfocal where you don't need to adjust the focus there possibly are better ones but uh, for the price i think the antlia are a really really good value and uh, i i'd recommend them i think they're a really nice filter um they're they're a nice uh, very nice quality they look well made and i'll be honest with you when you see the image i've got of m106 i think you'll agree um they certainly do a decent job on a big plus side for the filters, which I'm really pleased with, is there does not seem to be any uh, hint of halos on any of the filters. I'm showing the blue filter here as um, as with like the oxygen, the O3 filter, that's the one that can suffer with halos the most. And as you can see in the bottom right hand uh, corner of the image here, there are three very bright stars. And as you can see, there is no hint of halos whatsoever. So I'm really pleased with that. Now this is a stack of uh, five minute subs. Um, lovely little uh, dust smoke donut in the middle there, which I obviously came out when I was doing my processing. But um, just to show you that looking at any of the bright stars, all the ones with the diffraction spikes are nice and bright, especially the one down in the bottom right hand corner and you can see there are no halos. So that's a big plus for these filters. So I'm now going to show you the image. Thank you ever so much for joining me for this session. I hope the information has been of use to you. And I'd also like to say a little special thank you to my uh, members of the channel. Uh, your help is greatly appreciated. Till next time, everyone, clear skies. everyone and welcome back to the channel hope you all well so today I'm going to do a video on some filters 
and uh, for Christmas I was lucky enough to get the 